All right, guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Today I'm in this 2021 Fiat 500e. It's been kindly lent to me by Stoneacre Fiat of Hyde. Stoneacre are the largest Fiat dealer in the UK, and if you mention to them that you've seen this video, they'll give you £250 off any new Fiat. Anyway, on to today's car. Let me begin with a little bit of background. The Fiat 500 has been around since the late 1930s. It was a cheap and cheerful car built by the people, for the people. It was immensely popular. It was basically the Italian version of the Mini. Although, and I'll probably get some stick for this, I actually prefer the Fiat 500 to the original Mini. I think it's just a better design. Many years later, in 2008, they made a new version fit for the 21st century. And again, that was a huge hit. The design was iconic. It was innocent and cute. Yes, it was unashamedly retro, but still a very successful design. It became very popular with young orange girls all over the UK. It was basically a Michael Kors handbag with wheels. Fast forward a decade and the world is changing. We're all being forced into EVs. So naturally Fiat have jumped on the battery bandwagon and produced this, this all new Fiat 500e. Gone are the petrol and diesels on offer. The only model you can buy is this battery powered version. It has to be said they've done an excellent job with this car. I think it's brilliant, I love it. I'll be the first to admit that I'm a little bit of an EV skeptic. I'm not completely sold on the idea. I think my main reason for the skepticism is that they're being forced on us, which I don't like. They should be so appealing that we actually want to go out and buy one with our own money, rather than having them forced upon us. That's just not progress. It's just not how it's supposed to work. I mean, can you imagine when the DVD player came out? There wasn't a ban on VHS. We weren't made to feel guilty for playing back an old video. Anyway, setting aside my own personal opinion on the silly rules and regulations coming into force, there's quite a lot to like about EVs. We certainly shouldn't be afraid of the changeover. I like the idea of them in general. I like the way they drive. I like the silence. I like the speed. I like the fact that there are no emissions. And best of all, I love the fact that they are completely zero maintenance. No clutches to replace, no turbos blown, no engine issues, no gearbox issues. Something that I'm particularly excited about, no more engine lights. And can you imagine how good that is? No more know-it-all mechanics sucking air through the teeth when you show them a problem saying, that's gonna cost you that big time. That's all consigned to the history books. And that in itself does feel quite liberating. No more visiting petrol stations either. Another good thing, criminals can no longer steal your catalytic converters because they don't have one. The thing that I like most of all about EVs is that even the smallest of cars seem to be loaded with tech. Small cars in the past have always been the most basic way of getting from A to B. Most of them are hateful little econo boxes built to a budget. Most of them don't have air conditioning or Bluetooth or electric windows. But this Fiat has it all. Electric power seems to really suit small city cars. It's without doubt the way forward. The previous Fiat 500 with its horsepower free 1.2 litre petrol engine wasn't great to drive. The gearboxes weren't reliable, they were very slow, couldn't get up most hills around here. But this, this is superb. It's genuinely fun to drive. Small cars such as this generally drive around 20 or 30 miles a day. So having a limited battery range just isn't the big issue that people suggest it is. This 42 kilowatt hour model has a realistic range of about 160 miles, which is more than enough. I mean, can you imagine buying a brand new Kia Picanto petrol and the salesman saying, well, you're limited, you know, to 160 miles a day. Most owners of those types of cars wouldn't do that in a week or a fortnight. It just isn't an issue. All you do is every couple of days, plug it in, leave it to charge overnight, and the next morning, by the time you're ready to go to work, it's fully charged and you've got another 160 miles. What could be simpler? Let's talk then about the styling. I think they've done a great job with this. It's instantly recognisable as a Fiat 500, but it just looks more modern. It's slightly wider and slightly longer than the outgoing model, which straight away just makes it look more chunky. Slightly more aggressive. It's definitely less feminine than the previous model. I love the headlights. They look like those angry tattooed eyebrows that some women have. I love the fact that the door handles, which always used to fall off in your hand on the outgoing model, have been replaced with just an elegant, simple button that's hidden. The interior door handles have gone too. Instead, they've been replaced by this little button which looks like the head of a Phillips shaver. I also like the chrome belt that they've given it. It all looks really upmarket. It just feels and looks like a, a proper premium product. Moving inside, it's more of the same. It's much nicer than the outgoing model, and because it's slightly wider, it just feels more spacious. The dash is nice and interesting to look at. It's really stylish. Because this is the top spec La Prima model, you've got this huge infotainment screen. It's totally touchscreen and very easy to use. 
You have a wireless charging point down here for your phone with the outline of the city of Torino. I love that because finally in a car, I've got somewhere for my phone, wallet, keys, face mask, unfortunately. It just all goes there. All cars should have that. The steering wheel's very nice too. It just feels lovely to use. It's a nice stylish design. You've got the audio controls behind the steering wheel, like an American car. And on the front, you've got the controls for your Bluetooth, for the cruise control, for the semi-autonomous driving system. It's all there and it's all easy to use. Because all EVs are automatic, they've done away with the gear lever and instead replaced it with these nice little buttons. So you've just got drive, neutral, reverse and park. It is meant that it's opened up this space here. So, they put in a cup holder. It's all very clever. It doesn't feel as though you're driving a small car, which is the sign of a very intelligent design. In the centre, you've got a nice comfortable armrest here. You've got two storage compartments, which are very deep. You've got USB charging points, 12 volt charging point. You've got an electronic handbrake in the centre. You've got a switch here to change the driving mode to eke out more miles from the battery. Something else you've got in the centre console is this volume dial. All cars should have that too. The technology this car has is truly impressive. The display is excellent, although my shoddy camera won't do it much justice, but the reverse camera is in HD. It has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which are very user friendly. If you set the adaptive cruise control, it will not only accelerate for you, it'll also brake for you and steer. I could get used to this. You also have plenty of space up front for both elbows, plenty of headroom. Rear space isn't great, in fact it's abysmal. But this kind of car is what you expect, isn't it? Realistically, the rear seats are rarely going to be used. This is the kind of car that you drive on your own or with a front passenger, so that shouldn't come as any surprise. If you're somebody who needs more space in the back, then you really better buy another car. Most, when I say most, I mean most, not all. Most of the interior feels quite good quality. There are a couple of areas of cheap plastics, like on the glove compartment and on the center console, but they've done well to disguise the rest of it in nice, I don't think it is real leather, but nice leather looking stuff. So it does feel quite upmarket way more than the last model anyway. In addition to the rear space not being great, boot space is quite poor too, especially this one being the convertible version. But again, for this kind of car, it's all right. You can't really criticize it too much. It's not as if this kind of car is ever gonna be bought by an antiques dealer or a window cleaner, so it shouldn't be an issue. You'll get your briefcase in it or your Michael Kors handbag and a couple of bags of shopping. So for what this car has been designed to do, it should do the job. In terms of what it's like to drive, it's great fun. You've got a low center of gravity because the batteries are heavy and they're low down. And with that electric motor, you've got instant power and instant torque. It starts to run out when you get to about 60 miles an hour, but zero to 60, there isn't an awful lot that would keep up with this. I just don't think you'd ever tire of the speed. Zero to 40, it's rapid. In fact, let me demonstrate. I've got nothing behind me. That's 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. It's quick. It just makes this the perfect car for city driving. The semi-autonomous driving feature is also very good. I was driving this this morning. Anyone that knows this area will know exactly what I'm talking about. I was driving through Point and Village and they've got double roundabouts, which usually you need testes the size of grapefruits and an IQ in three digits, but not with this. This just tagged onto the Toyota Yaris in front and got me all the way through it. The ride is a little bit on the firm side, but you expect that from a car with such a short wheelbase. It's not intolerable at all. On to the battery range. Now, Fiat sell this car with two battery options. So you've got a 24 kilowatt hour battery, which gives you a real world range of about 100 miles, or a 42 kilowatt hour battery, which gives you a real world range of about 160 miles. That's the model I'm in today. Fiat say that this bigger battery is capable of 200 miles, but I think to see anywhere near 200 miles, You'd have to drive everywhere at 22 miles an hour with the radio off, sweating because the air conditioning is off as well. I think realistically 160 miles is the number. I have a 2017 Fiat 500e which I imported last year from California and that has a 24 kilowatt hour battery which gives you a range of between 85 and 105 miles depending on the weather and how you drive. And that's all right, I use it to drive to work and back and it will last me four or five days without having to charge it. But if one night you leave work and you think, oh, I'll just pop into town or I'll go to the traffic centre or whatever, then you can't. You've got to go home and swap it for another car, which really means that the 24 kilowatt hour battery is only suitable as a second car. Whereas I think the 42 kilowatt hour battery version you could have as your only car. Your range anxiety will be gone. It's a case of so far so good with this car. Well, there are a couple of gripes which I've got to mention. Firstly, some of the buttons, including the start stop button, 
require quite a firm push before they respond. I suppose in time they might free up, but it is a little bit annoying because sometimes you think you've turned it on and you really haven't. Another thing, when you lock the car, the horn sounds, which is annoying. It's like an American car feature. My 2017 500e does the same thing, but I assume that's just because it was built for the American market. But this does it too. So you creep around in stealth mode all day long, you get home at night or in the early hours, and then you lock it and it lets off a klaxon. It's just silly. The biggest issue with this car though is the price. Wait till I tell you how expensive it is, you won't believe it. A couple of years ago, a, a top spec Fiat 500 lounge would set you back around 15 grand, which is acceptable for a little city car. This costs 30, that's twice the price. 30,000 of your great British pounds. It's, it's just f f flipping expensive. You could buy two Fiat 500 lounges for the same price. And for £30,000, I'd just... I'd rather have a used Range Rover or a used Bentley Continental GT. I just can't believe the price they're asking for this car. Now, of course, nobody in their right mind is going to walk into a Fiat dealer and hand over £30,000. Most will just do a PCP. Now, in that case, it probably makes sense because you'll lease one of these for three or four years for a couple of hundred pounds a month. Now, in that case, it starts to make much more sense. After three or four years, you just give the keys back and walk away. I've got no idea how these things will be priced in three or four years time once they've come back off their PCPs. Time will tell I suppose. Hopefully if they're reasonable, if they're 14 or 15 grand once they're three years old with 30,000 miles on the clock, more and more people might be able to buy them and afford them as used cars. I'd happily own one of these cars though, I've loved using it, but would I spend 30,000 pounds of my own money on one? Absolutely not. Would I lease one for a sensible monthly figure? Yeah, I think I probably would. Should I stop asking myself questions like Sam and Cowell? I think so. Thanks once again for watching. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done already. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I'll leave the link below. If you're interested in buying a new Fiat, then contact Stoneacre. Mention this video and they'll give you £250 off. If you're interested in getting into the used car business, then check out my online course. I've created an online portal with more than 85 videos which explain every single aspect of the used motor trade. How to fund, dealing with customers, where to buy cars from, how to prep cars. Everything you could possibly wish to know is on there. So check it out. So cheers guys, I'll see you next time. Thanks once again.